sensitive topic for me, um, and that is one of the measurements, and, and, and I should tell you that our philosophy is I've got to be able to measure it. I understand people have good ears. I, if, I've learned, if I've learned anything by dipping my toe in the audiophile business, it's that people hear things that I can't measure. But it just tells me I'm not measuring the right things. So, you know, we, we strive to be able to measure it because I can't design it and I can't make it repeatable if I can't measure it. And I'm going to show you some of the extensive measuring we do. But um, one of the key things, key measurements, key parameters that the majority of the industry does not pay attention to is group delay. Okay? We design our amplifiers for group delay. Does everybody know what group delay is? No. Okay. So group delay, okay, from a mathematical, let's start, let's start where everybody's eyes are going to glaze over, is the difference in phase as a function of frequency. So group delay, which is usually expressed as tau, is the difference in the phase of the signal versus the frequency. What does that mean? Okay. Phase is just time. Okay. The phase of the signal is just time. Okay. The, 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 the phase of a signal okay, at one frequency, as it goes through a, a, a nonlinear device, and everything in nature is nonlinear device under test, okay, the phase of a device is what causes distortion. And I'm going to talk to you about that in a minute. But think about it this way. If I have a piece of wire in this device under test, that's as linear as you're going to get in nature as a piece of wire. If I put a signal in at the low frequency, 20 hertz signal, and it'll have a transit time through that wire of, let's throw something, a millisecond. When I put a 20 kilohertz signal in, in there, it will also see a one millisecond delay because the wire is ultimately linear. Now we put an amplifier in the equation. Amplifiers have nonlinearities. I don't care how well it's designed. It's the design engineers. Uh, he, he strives to, to, to make sure that the listening region, both in amplitude and frequency, is in the linear portion of the performance curve. Okay? But there are nonlinearities in the amplifier. So what that means is, if I put a 20 kilohertz or a 20 hertz tone in the amplifier, it's transit time through the amplifier maybe one millisecond. If I put a 20 kilohertz signal in the amplifier, its transit time could be 10 milliseconds because it's, there's a nonlinearity. That much? I'm, 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 I'm spitballing oh, numbers. Yeah, I, I numbers. can actually show you group delay measurements because we actually measure it. I think we're the only ones that do. Okay, but we designed for it. That's Hold that thought. Hold that thought. So the the important thing here is what is the effect of group delay? So we say, oh, okay, that's interesting. What's the effect to the listener? Spirit. Huh? Spirit. A little bit, little bit more detail than smear. Think about this for a second. If I have an orchestra presentation, and I've got the don't match up with the signal. The what? The transit don't match up. Oh, it the, 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 the human ear senses position. What's the thing that really jazzes you about high end audio? For me, it's sound stage. Right. Right. I there's a lot of things that I love about listening to music, but the thing that really gives me goosebumps is when I can listen to a two channel system and get a three dimensional display of the music. Okay, how does the human ear differentiate the position of those instruments? Think about an orchestra. You know, I've got the I've got the the uh, percussion over here on the left. I got the violins down here. I've got vocals up in the right hand corner. How does the human ear differentiate where they're located? Timing, 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 the timing, the timing the phase, and the human ear is incredibly sensitive to phase differences. That's how I know it's. I hear it over here, not over here because my ear is sensing the phase difference of when they arrive differently, different times in the ear. I was told that it, it depends on the frequency, but I think it's phase at high frequencies. Well, the frequency, if you have a device that has group delay in it, or, and all devices in nature have group delay because they're nonlinear, it distorts that phase relationship. And if you have amplifiers that have sufficiently high group delay, you lose the sound stage. You get what we call the wall of sound. I don't know where the instruments are. I hear them, they sound good, but I can't tell where they are. Okay? We design the amplifiers for minimal group delay. And I will show you curves, and, and, and you know, there are design secrets as to how we achieve it. I would, I would have to kill you if I told you. But the, <laughs> Darn it. Our amplifiers have zero group delay through the entire listing. 
So uh, one of the things I hope you will notice when you listen to our products, this is probably not the most ideal listening condition, is that they have tremendous sound stage. I'm glad you brought this up and going back to and linking it to current to uh, uh, density in the PCB. And one of the problems is if you start making large traces so you can have the current capacity, now you have group delay problems because you start to have a whole lot of phase delay in those Correct. large traces. Um, that brings me to the question, has anybody thought of a very simple way to do it? Lift your goddamn conductors on the PCB. Little traces instead of a large one. Um, I'm not sure that would solve the problem. And I, I will tell you, the bigger contributor to group delay rather than the traces are reactive components in yes, the signal fan. There, there's, there's a couple of things that drive it. Most tube amplifiers are capacitively coupled stage to stage. Capacitors are reactive elements, meaning that their resistance changes as a function of frequency, therefore their phase changes as a function of frequency. That causes group delay more than anything else. And the thing is, guys, in the, guys that are designing tube amps, most of them are copying RCA designs. They're not doing, you know, real engineering. And they, they put coupling capacitors in there or some transformers, and they induce group delay. There's, not, there's no way to tune it out. You know, it, 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 once you put filter components in there, you will have group delay. That's how a filter component works, is it? Mm -hmm. That's how a filter component works. Exactly. Right? It's, exactly. It's, it's inherent to the topology of, of a filter component. So it's... It's a, it's a critical component, it's a critical parameter. For some reason, I, and I think it's just because the audio industry isn't familiar with it, it comes from the communications industry, but um, they don't measure group delay. You look at John Atkinson's curves in the stereophile evaluations, he does not measure group well, delay. When you get up to the hundred, you know, kilo, hundreds of kilohertz, then group delay really becomes serious, right? And, 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 and you say, well, why do I care? My ear's only good to 20 kilohertz. Well, for communications, good, though, you want it to carry waves or anything like But it matters in audio, too. You, you see, these amplifiers we typically design for a 200 kilohertz bandwidth. Yeah. And the reason we do that is because there are overtones well outside of the human hearing range. If you define the human hearing range as 20 to 20, 20 hertz, 20 kilohertz, okay? Um, overtones way outside of the human hearing range. You say, well, why do I care? Because they have mixing products that come back into the intermodulation distortion at high frequencies. Well, not necessarily distortion. There are products that are, to the, that are you know, if you look at a, a guitar string and what the, what the frequency content of a guitar string is, it's got multiple frequency content. Yes. And they will mix in the higher orders. Well, that's intermodulation, and, and isn't it? It can be. And it, and it produces tones back into human hearing. It's interesting, sure. in the 40s, RCA did a study where they put um, people in a room, very similar to this, and they had critical listeners, they had um, program engineers, and they had you know, regular people off the street. And they played speech and music. And they varied the harmonic content of the speech and the music. And they said, tell us what sounds most realistic. And it turned out that harmonics in the 10th, 11th, 12th range, way outside of the human hearing range, affected the, re the, reali the, the um, realistic, realistic qualities of that sound. Mm. And, that, and it's not that the human ear, I mean, there are arguments that say that the crystals in your ear vibrate at higher frequencies than 20 kilohertz. I, I'm not a psychoacoustics guy, but I can tell you that they have mixing products back in the range. So if the amplifier can't reproduce them, you're not going to get them.